Okay, it's going to be a review of SummerSlam 1989. Uh, yeah, definitely a good choice. This is a very underrated SummerSlam. I, you know, I might say probably one of the most underrated. So, yeah, SummerSlam from the Meadowlands, East Rutherford, New Jersey, home of the New Jersey Nets. Yeah, the, the, the place was packed. There had to be at least over 22,000 fans out there. So, uh, yeah, business was doing good. Hogan was champion. I, I would definitely say, you know, 1989, you know, you could argue that this this was Hogan's best year, you know, financially and, you know, just in terms of, uh, you know, fan support. So first match of the night. And keep in mind, we're coming right off of the WCW Great American Bash 1989. So you got to wonder, maybe that had a lot of impact for this show. Uh, we got the Hart Foundation taking on the Brain Busters. Hell of a match right here. This, this might be like one of the best SummerSlam openers ever. Just had a, you know, they got about like 17 minutes out there. Just, you know, Brain Busters. Just, you know, just stuff that you normally would not notice from a fundamental standpoint which just very well done here i thought brett looked awesome you had hot tags to brett you had brett actually doing a double arm drag to arn anderson uh just the way tully blanchard was you know kind of using the mat to to get to the tag um you know arn anderson actually saw some of the telegraphs that the heart foundation were, were doing to avoid some of the um you know combination moves it was just very well done just just an awesome way to start off the show uh definitely a four-star match just uh you know probably probably like the hidden gem of the early stages of SummerSlam will be this Hart Foundation vs. Brain Buster match. And yeah, this show had a lot of, uh, it's funny that we're coming off of that great WCW pay-per-view because you got the Brain Busters in this match, then you got Dusty Rhodes in the next match. So here we go. We got Dusty actually taking on Honky Tonk, man. You know, the match was a lot of fun. You know, I know Dusty wasn't used, you know, exactly as well as a lot of his fans would have liked him to be used in the WWF. Um... But man, you know, the fans really got behind him. I thought him and Honky had a lot of chemistry here. They they just made for a great combination. Uh Jimmy Hart actually accidentally hits uh Honky Tonk with the guitar. Dusty wins the match, the crowd explodes. Just just a really fun uh second match of the night right there with uh Dusty and Honky Tonk. And uh from there, we got Mr. Perfect. I, I believe this is uh Kurt Henning's uh uh WWE pay-per-view debut. Uh, take it on the Red Rooster. That's not a wolf, that's a rooster. Now remember that Denzel line from uh, Training Day when Ethan Hawke's trying to, you know, mimic the, the, the wolf. Um, yeah, you know, th this this was really good stuff, man. I, I thought, you know, you know what this was? This was just a great showcase for Mr. Perfect. You know, he was able to kind of antagonize the rooster with some of, uh, you know, the rooster's goofy mannerisms. But, uh, yeah, Perfect actually won the match with the Perfect Plex. And, uh, yeah, Perfect just came across like, you know, this guy was on to something. He's just going to be a great wrestler. You know, that Perfect Plex was really put over huge uh, on this show. All right, so next up, you got the Rockers teaming up with Tito Santana to take on the Rougeau brothers and uh, Rick Martel. Yeah, you know, this is really good stuff. So, so Tito and Rick, they actually split, I believe it was at WrestleMania five. Uh, where Rick Rick Martel actually turned heel on his uh, you know tag team partner. So yeah, the the um, the intensity between Tito and Rick Martel was just really off the chart. That really stood out here. You know, Shawn Michaels got a really hot tag. You know, the fans got really behind Shawn. And uh, you know, you almost forget about the Rougeau brothers, man. They came out with that really you know cheesy 80s theme music, but it was it was actually kind of funny though. Um, but uh, but yeah, the Rougeau brothers. Like, um, you know, even my dad was telling me that he, he remembered watching those guys and how innovative they were for that time. And, you know, all the guys that they trained up in uh, Montreal, I believe Kevin Steen actually trained with them. So, yeah, they, they look good here. They play good heels here. And, uh, yeah, the hot tags here are just insane. But, uh, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, Rick Martel actually got a cheap shot, I believe, on Marty Chinetti to get the pinfall there. But yeah, you know, while this lasted, this this was just a lot of fun. This was definitely the better six-man tag on the show. All right, so next up, you got Ravishing Rick Rude defending the Intercontinental Championship against the Ultimate Warrior. This was awesome stuff. This is the best Rude Warrior uh, match. They also had a match the next year at SummerSlam in 1990, which was a steel cage match for uh warriors wwf title and uh yeah th and this was even better than wrestlemania 5 you know warrior just got in much better shape this got a lot of time you know what it, it i hate to say it but 
you know, at that time, you could argue this is a top 10 WWF match of all time, or at least like from the late 80s. I, I think it's that good. Uh, you know, Rude just, you know, you know, j- just like um, we were talking about w- at SummerSlam with uh, Warrior and Savage at SummerSlam 92. I think Rude, Rude, you could kind of put him in the same category as Savage that, you know, Warrior was just in great hands when he was working with guys like Rick Rude and Randy Savage. They just knew how to sell for Warrior. They, they knew how to structure the match. And uh, yeah, the match was just athletic. It was, um, you know, you really had some really, really... For that time, you had some monumental near falls. Like like Rude was hitting, you know, pile driver after pile driver, and Warrior was kicking out, and fans were just shocked by it. And then you had the uh, you know the crazy surprise appearance by Rowdy Roddy Piper, who distracted Rude. So Rude's like up on the top turnbuckle, yelling at Piper. Warrior gives uh, you know Rude like a Chris Benoit like German suplex. And uh, ultimately, you know, Warrior hits the uh, gorilla press and, and the splash to win the match, and the crowd exploded. Really, what this felt like was just a, a prequel to WrestleMania Six. It really got Warrior hot, and uh, you know, it just really you know got him to that next level, kind of setting the tone for you know a lot of his success uh, down the road there. All right, so after uh, Warrior, you know, I would definitely say, you know, Rick Rude and Warrior, uh, probably the match of the night, without a doubt. You know, classic Intercontinental Championship match. You know, it probably, if it, you know, obviously it does, it didn't age as well as some of the other stuff. But, you know, for that time, uh, the match was just really, really good. You know, Warrior had some, you know, obviously the guy wasn't a great wrestler, but he had like five matches that you could argue were just like, you know, great, you know. Um so here we go. Next next match, you got Andre the Giant teaming up with the Twin Towers to take on King Hacksaw, Jim Duggan, and uh, Demolition. I, I believe, yeah, I, I think uh, Hacksaw might have won King of the Ring. They might have had like a King of the Ring television special, or or maybe he was calling himself King Hacksaw because of the Royal Rumble. I'm, I'm not sure because he was the first Royal Rumble uh, uh, victor. But uh, yeah, you know, they kept it short and sweet. Obviously, Andre couldn't do a lot here. And, uh, you know, Demolition actually got the the cheap shot victory. And and even back then, like the heels would take a foreign weapon behind the referee's back and still get the pinfall. Uh, So, yeah, they kept this very short. This was not nearly as good as the other six-man tag. You just have a lot of meat in this match. Uh, Yeah, Hacksaw Jim Duggan actually hit the the two-by-four behind the referee's back. And I believe it was... uh, I believe it was Axe that actually got the uh, the pinfall from Demolition uh, right there. So, uh, and then next up, what did we get next? We got Hercules taking on Greg the Hammer Valentine. Yeah, this was kind of, yeah, this was kind of crappy. You had Ronnie Garvin being like a special guest uh, ring announcer. He was really kind of making fun of, uh, you know, uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine throughout the whole thing. But yeah, I, I just didn't think these two clicked. You know, Greg actually won with the foot on the rope, but then, you know, Garvin was actually saying that the real winner, in my opinion, is is Hercules. So it was just corny. It was cheesy. Uh, definitely the worst thing on the night. Um, you know, Million Dollar Man caught a great promo with uh, with Virgil on uh, Jimmy Superfly Snooker. So uh, Ted DiBiase wrestles uh, Jimmy Snooker. This was okay. You know, it was a little bit botchy. You know, DiBiase did some overselling for Snuka, but it really felt like Snuka was really, um, you know, putting over a lot of heels back then. You know, even going into 91, you know, he put over uh, The Undertaker at Undertaker's first WrestleMania. Here he puts over uh, DiBiase. So, you know, Snuka was kind of getting up there in age at the time, but, you know, he's still a legend. But, you know, I, I you almost forget, even as a kid, like, you know, the Snuka was kind of being used just to put over other talents. Like, he never really got any big victories, you know, when you look at the late 80s, early 90s. And, uh, yeah, Hogan's promo with Brutus Beefcake with Mean Gene. You know, Hogan still had the eye of the tiger back then, man. It was it was just a great promo there. The, the Sherry promo where she's kind of looking into a crystal ball um, with Macho and Zeus came off really good. Yeah, Sherry looked evil. Her makeup looked really... Um, you know, very 80s-like in a good way. And, yeah, so uh, so you got Macho Man Randy Savage actually teaming up with Zeus to take on Hulk Hogan and Brutus the Barber Beef, Beefcake. Yeah, I, you know, I thought this was a, you know, a really fun main event. You know, it was a good way to promote No Holds Barred. You know, Zeus, Tiny Lister Jr., uh, was in that movie with Hogan, and uh, you know, obviously, a lot of a lot of Zeus's association with SummerSlam was to promote the movie. But I'll tell you what, though, man, Zeus had a great look. You know, I almost forget. You know, this is 
This is Debo from Friday. You know, Friday is, you know, obviously if you grew up in the 90s, if you're a rap fan, hip hop fan, uh, you know, Ice Cube, first movie as a director, you know, that movie is a classic. And, and Zeus, you know, Debo is like one of the best villains ever. He's just this like neighborhood bully, just kind of like stealing, you know, jewelry and, and uh, you know, robbing people, you know, in the middle of the hood. It's just a, it's just a great movie. And, and by the way, that, that Debo character, he should have made my top 10 uh, villains of all time. But yeah, Zeus had a he had a great look, man. You know, they really didn't have him do a lot, just a lot of no selling, just kind of like a lot of Mongolian chops and just kind of just, you know, holding Hogan by the throat. But it looked convincing. It came off great. He got a lot of great heat here. The fans bought into it. And, uh, yeah, I, I would say, you know, Tiny Lister Jr., you know, for, uh, you know, this celebrity appearance. Just just very well done. It's almost like one of the best um, examples of a celebrity coming in and just, you know, playing his role and being effective. It just it just definitely worked. You know, the crowd, you know, exploded for Hogan here. So, um yeah, I got to say, Savage really carried this math with his athleticism. I think I said in the pay-per-view rewind how how much praise I gave Savage here. I thought he looked incredible. Like his athleticism was just on another level at that time. Yeah, him and Hogan had great chemistry in this match. And, you know, ultimately, they told the story on the Saturday Night Main events about how, you know, Zeus was indestructible, how he no-sold everything. But Hogan was able to get him down. And uh, ultimately hit him with the, uh, I believe it was uh, Sherry's pocketbook, and actually hit him with the um, body slam and the leg drop to put him down. And you know Miss Elizabeth came out for a surprise appearance. Yeah, the, the crowd was going apeshit. This is just in terms of crowd reaction, it just it just worked. It it screamed, you know, cheesy '80s, but at the same time, it was uh, financially successful. Tons of people there. I'm sure this got a great pay per view buy rate. And yeah, really fun main event. You got great tag team wrestling. You got a, a classic Intercontinental Championship match. A really, really good six-man tag. You know, I would definitely say SummerSlam 1989. Very, very underrated show. Uh, def definitely the best SummerSlam probably of the 80s, uh, even though there's not a lot to choose from. All right.